the oldest of all combat sports, bare knuckle fighting has made a return. Many forget boxing gloves were invented to protect the hands of the puncher, not the head of the punch. As a result, fighters could throw many more and much harder punches to their opponent's head. It's our position and that of many that bare knuckle fighting is actually less harmful and concussive to the head and brain than regular boxing or MMA, where fights can go many more rounds and allow for elbows, knees, and kicks to the head and body. With that, BYB Extreme Bare Knuckle Fighting Series was born. BYB's management team has over 75 years of experience in professional boxing and combat sports. The world-famous godfather of backyard fighting, Dada 5000, is the lead spokesperson for BYB Extreme Fighting Series. BYB's backyard brawls were established in the rough streets of South Florida at Dada 5000's world-famous greenhouse. The millions of YouTube views and the success of the number one Netflix documentary, Dogfight, has proven that our bare knuckle brawls can capture the world's attention. Dada 5000, he the Don King in the backyard. It's a name that needs little introduction in South Florida and arguably beyond. Dada 5000 achieved the second highest draw in the history of Bellator in gay and TV audience. With his fight against bare knuckle legend Kimbo Slice, garnishing over 2 million views. The dogfight documentary featuring Dada 5000 and BYB was an instant success for Netflix. Over 1.8 billion people around the world have seen it. You know, we got corporate America to come out you know, of their office, trade their, trade their suits and ties in for baseball hats and tennis shoes, and it changed everybody's lives. And that was something that they said could not be done. Round two covers Dada's historic fight against Kimbo Slice. His comeback and the launch of BYB Extreme with events in Wyoming and at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in South Florida. BYB's patented triangle ring and cage, known by fans as the Trigon, are the smallest in combat sports, pitting opponents in an area where they can't run or hide. The Trigon forces confrontation and therefore resolution, boasting over 160 brawls and a 97% KO TKO finish rate. DYB brawls are designed to be left in the hands of the fighters and not the judges giving fighters and fans alike a proper and exciting outcome. From the Hard Rock Live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is extreme bare knuckle boxing. This beautiful hotel and casino, 13 restaurants, 20 bars, 9,100 square foot casino room floor. 3,100 slot machines, a 45 table poker room. It has it all for the gamer and for the fighting enthusiast as well. Welcome, Benny Ricardo is here. I'm Dave Ryan, Glenn Johnson is here too. Longtime fight commentator, NFL kicker, comedian, does it all businessman, he's amazing. And Glenn, of course, the world champion, the road warrior himself. Glenn, bottom line is this trigon in front of us is 187 square feet. That means we're gonna have violence and quick confrontation, right? Definitely, and you don't want to get trapped in any one of these corners because it's going to be difficult to get out of it, especially if you have a good, talented fighter in front of you. You're going to pay a big price to get out of it. Bottom line, this is the fourth event in the BYB Extreme Series, Benny, and we've only had two fights go the distance. So, as you give us a preview and talk about the rules, it's going to be quick and very violent. Exactly, it's gonna be violent. But again, folks, what you gotta understand, the, the blows are not as concussive as they're in boxing because in bare knuckle, you gotta fight in a rhythm of one, two, one, two. You gotta be very precise. Now, the rules are the following. It's gonna be five rounds, three minutes each, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight. It has to go past two rounds in order to be, to be declared a contest in case of a, a cut or any accidental uh, movement that took place. And the other thing is the tie plumb. That's what differs from boxing. And, and bare knuckle you can use your left hand or right hand with one hand grab the back of the neck strike the opponent mm -hmm. and that for that you got to be able to get close and you got to be willing to pay the price otherwise great setting for fights 
Quick action, bone crushing action. We're gonna see some tremendous fighting. It's coming away here from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. BYB Extreme is brought to you in part by Epic Disposable Vape, made from tobacco-free nicotine. Estrella Insurance, car insurance, lowest price guarantee. Boost Oxygen, professional grade supplemental oxygen without a prescription. Wherever and whenever you want access to amazing pure oxygen for aerobic recovery, energy, and peak performance. And by Diesel Physique, scientifically proven to add muscle mass. Ready now for Pablo Caballero, the killer. Head to head with Rob Fuller from Denver, Colorado. Let's meet Rob. My name is Rob Fuller. They call me the mini white Kimbo Slice. Um, and they gave me the name because my crazy grill and I fight like him. This is my first bare knuckle fight. It's my debut. Um, it's a great opportunity. Uh, I know Dada 5000. Um, so it was a great opportunity to get on the show with not a lot of places to fight right now. It's, it's a good opportunity to, to pave the way and see where bare knuckle can take us. What's different, I guess the difference is bare knuckle is you don't really got to worry about takedowns as far as like MMA. Um, boxing, you know, you got big gloves, so there's there's a lot of different um, unique skill sets that go into uh, bare knuckle as opposed to other um, combative sports. As for thoughts on Rob Fuller, Benny, to me it was no nonsense right away. Very serious customer. Well, I thought he had a great line. He's looking to hear his skull when his fist ends up connecting. I thought, wow, that's a heck of a sound to be looking for. <laughs> you know yeah. that sound through all of your years of training and fighting uh, with boxing gloves on. Now, no gloves in bare knuckle, uh, knuckle, Glenn. What do you think about his chances tonight? Well, he looked like he had a great chance. He seemed like he high spirit, talking like he know what he's talking about, like he's been around boxing, been around the fight game for a while. You have all of his fundamentals together. So I'm looking forward to see how he comes out in this try guard. All right, gentlemen, tail of the tape. Getting set for Caballero and Fuller Benny, what stands out to you here? Well, it's, it's pretty even right there, although Caballero's got a pretty good reach. That's a three inch reach advantage. And you look at the age, Caballero's 29, Fuller is 40. Is age just a number or is that a big disadvantage? Well, age is just a number based on how you're feeling and what you have to do. And now ready to make his way to the Trigon from the blue corner. Rob nice Fuller! Ooh. Here he is, Rob Fuller, Denver, Colorado. Oh, yeah. How about the look? How about the mask? Blue and orange hair. So I asked him yesterday, Benny, well, you must be a Broncos fan. You're a big NFL guy. Played in the NFL. He said, no. I just love the colors. Represents me. I'm a Cowboys fan. <laughs> and you know, he had a great line about the fact that, you know, I'd fight anywhere. If I wasn't fighting here, I'd be throwing it in the crib. You know, I'd be fighting at home. So here's a guy that just loves to fight. Yeah, he loves fighting. Say, so fight at home, fight in the street. He fight anywhere. He, he just loves fighting. So I'm going to see what exactly he have, if he's just a talker or he's a performer. And now, ready to make his way to the Trigon from the red corner, Pablo Caballero. Pablo's entrance, which means either a cowboy or a gentleman in Spanish. I don't think he's concentrating necessarily, Benny, on gentlemanly fighting tonight in the Trigon. Absolutely now He comes in with that Argentinian flag. It's tremendous pride towards Argentina in the fight game. He's, this is a guy that's been fighting nine years now, but he said he loves every kind of fight. He's a great student of the, the fight game, tries to pick up things from different fighters, and that's what he's going to bring tonight. He's going to bring it. Well, he seems to have a flair about him. He's, he's very happy, very outgoing. Um, very, does seem like he, he have an up spirit type of fighting. I think he's going to come aggressive in this fight, and it should be a good night. Born in Argentina, now lives in Cape Coral, Florida, not far from where we are here in South Florida. And Benny talked to us yesterday about calculated violence. How did you translate that? Well, in, in Spanish, you know, when we were sitting there talking in Spanish about that, he right. says, 
you know, he's a very methodical guy. He's the kind of guy that every step has a meaning. Every punch that he throws, the way he dips his shoulder, the way he positions himself. So it's almost like a fast-paced chess game with his fists. Well, boxing changes every minute. It's, it's a fluid thing, so you have to be able to think on your feet very quickly. In, in seconds, two, three things can happen, so you have to be ready. And he seems to be in high spirit and ready for all of that. I'm looking forward to see if he's going to come out, start using his jab, like he says he's going to do, and, and, and move forward, because he say he's very aggressive, and I'm looking forward to see how he's going about that. Very high energy guy. A boxing background, MMA background. He said, you give me a fight, I am ready to brawl. And Dave, I'm going to tell you right now, that hair is going to be a problem. He's got the long hair. Every bare knuckle fight I've done, the guys with long hair, eventually it comes down in their face, and it gets to be a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, from Hard Rock Live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, our next bout of the evening is brought to you by BYB Extreme Bare Knuckle Boxing, the Seminole Tribe of Florida, and Boost Oxygen. This bout scheduled for five three-minute rounds of bare knuckle boxing in the 135-pound division. The three judges scoring at ringside, Rich Green, Hector Gomez and Vincente Rodriguez. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Andy Glenn. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at 134 and three quarter pounds. A veteran of nine professional bouts, from Denver, Colorado, here is Rob Fuller. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the gold trim. He weighed in at 134 and a half pounds. A veteran of 15 professional bouts, El Hijo de Rafaela Santa Fe, Argentina. Here is Pablo Caballero. All right, gentlemen, you got the rules in the back. Do you have any questions about the rules? Follow my instructions, protect yourself. Line looks good here. Touch them up, step back, be ready at the bell. Intense stare down from Pablo Caballero. And away we go, scheduled for five rounds. It's a rarity to go the distance in the Trigon. And already that hair's getting in the way. Predicted it, Penny. They are coming together hard with a major confrontation. That's a low blow right there, Glenn. Yeah, that's. Uh, he started moving, which he didn't talk like he was going to move much yesterday. He talked like he was going to come straight forward. But he was moving around, trying to create space. Well, he wouldn't tell us what he was going to do. He was very secretive about what his plan was. And I said, there's a five-foot space. We're going to see what you're going to do on there. He spoke in generalities about the strategy. Look at Fuller go. Some haymakers that come up empty. He just he is unloading now with the right hand. Response from Caballero, nearly Dex Fuller. Amazing that Fuller's hands have survived that. Oh, he's just flailing. There's a lot of big punches landing between these two guys. He's throwing back and backhand. He's, throwing, he's going front and back with the hand. Both fighters are hurting. Fuller staggers into the ropes quickly up. He can't figure out which is the neutral corner. He's already swelling up. Look at, this Look at that face. right cheek. That is a nut. And it's growing fast. Andy Glenn, our referee, gets things going again. And the key for Caballero is to throw that left hook. The left hook is there for him. Yes, he's definitely landing the left hook. Body shots, Caballero. But it is and that's again, Fuller goes down. Good body shot. 
He went to the body multiple times, Glenn, and scored big. And that's a delayed response when you take that shot to the solar plexus there. That's it, it's over. Andy Glenn stops the fight in the first. Caballero celebrates. That's why I love the fight game. You know, these guys go in and they're throwing bombs, and then afterwards, they hug each other. You know what? It's just business. Well, it's business. I mean, you know, you go in there, nobody want to pay to see your shadow box. You need somebody to compete against. So, uh, you know, it's just straight competition. And Fuller definitely brought the fight right there to Caballero. You'll get some medical attention for that goose egg, which is growing. Oh, man, that thing is growing fast. First time in the bare knuckle trigon for Pablo Caballero of Cape Coral, originally from Argentina, impressive. Exactly, from Rafaela. But you know, Glenn, talk about the gloves. These gloves, even though they're wearing gloves, there's a one inch space between the knuckles and the tape that have to be exposed. And then the gloves come, but basically the glove fortifies the wrist so that when they throw that shot, it gives them a little support. Yeah, it's, it's just to protect the wrist and the thumb. It doesn't do anything for to protect the fighter. Um, now your knuckles, because uh, you just want to protect your wrist. But these guys, it was a good fight. I like the way how they both was going at it. Um, they were swinging, um, they was competing. Here's how this one ended. He walk him into the corner, and then he, that's where the low blow happened. Here's the low blow first, yep, below the belt, and then, boy, he connects the left. And then that hook. Down. And then he, came to, he got caught. And you know, that, when he came in with that low blow, that's the example of the tie plump. Because if you notice, Caballero had him by the back of his neck and then went down low. And then go to body shot. You're he, right, body shot finished him. The body shot finished him. Good fight. Fun to watch. It was. The lot of fists was flying from everywhere. I was ducking from here when they were throwing those haymakers. Ladies and gentlemen, from Hard Rock Live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, your referee in charge, Andy Glenn, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 48 seconds of the first round. Your winner by knockout, Pablo Caballero. Listen, I seen you when you came down to the gym and you told me that you're an exciting fighter, right? You came out here, you put on the show, and you put on another show inside the ring. Did you get a chance to stick to your game plan that you and your team worked on? Yeah, my game plan is body shot. My, 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 my coach uh, always say, come on, uh, change the level, you know, move, move. And uh, when he coming crazy, Okay, I, I clinch and use my dirty box and and I say, okay. Uh, he he say um, um, punching the balls, but no, he he wanna he wanna make it time. But no problem. I fight again and switch the level and come down and chin down and change level. That's it. I take a body shot. Uh, we was training a lot. Well, you put on an awesome performance here tonight, and I'm pretty sure that the viewers cannot wait till you make your return into the mighty Trigon ring. Thanks for coming out. Thank Enjoy you. your win. Thank you. Rob. It seemed like when you came out here, you know, you were game from the sound of the first bell. When the low blow occurred, it seemed like you switched gears. Do you wish that you would have kept your composure? Because it seemed like when that transpired, you just went all out. Yeah, man, sometimes I let you get to me. And uh, just to stay, stay a little bit more composed, would have been able to fight my fight more. But you know, shit happens sometimes. They hit me in spots and kind of gets to my temper and shit, and I just kind of lose it. But just got to stay more composed, more grounded, bro. Be able to get the job done next time. Well, I'm pretty sure the viewers can agree that this was a high-octane fight from start to finish, you know, and I know you're going to come back bigger, stronger, and uh, you get a chance to do it again. Man, I hope you'll have me back. Appreciate you having me, bro. That's what's up. Thank you. Back to you guys. Start off 5,000. Thanks so much. Rob Fuller, a tough customer.
flurry of punches. In the end, Pablo Caballero, the killer. Cape Coral, Florida, after being born and raised in Argentina, impressive fighter. A big win here tonight in Florida. My name is Isaiah, the People's Champ Quinones. You know why they call me the People's Champ? Because I fight for you, the people. Fighting out of Boston, Massachusetts, representing Puerto Rico. Que rico, Puerto Rico, let's go. My style really is to have no style. I just try to adapt to who I'm fighting, you know? Never is there gonna be a fight that's the same. Every fight's different, every opponent's different. My fighting style is to knock you out. I grew up fighting all my life, you know, living in the streets, being homeless. I was able to learn by the streets. I never really, you know, had a coach or somebody teach me a technique until I started bare knuckle fighting and I started training with uh, Josh Dempsey. Bare knuckle fighting is the oldest sport in history. This ain't boxing, this ain't MMA. This is straight bone on bone. There's no pad, no protection. This isn't the movie. This isn't played out. This is what you get, this is blood knockouts. All my life I was scared to express myself because I wasn't sure if I could defend myself. So fighting has given me food, fighting has given me a place to live, fighting has given me my two pit bulls, it's given me a better relationship with my family. I guess that's why I really like fighting, because it helps me get through life. I got two pit bulls, I got Champ and Muñeca. I consider myself to be like a pit bull because the first thing people do when they see a pit bull is they judge them. Don't judge a pit bull by his cover. They may look mean, but you know, we're not. But we do bite. <laughs> I'm not here to pity pat, I'm here to be the greatest. This is something that we love to do. Whether it's me, my opponent, or anybody, show everybody love. Make sure you stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of action, a lot of blood, a lot of knockouts. Just put on a good show, have a good fight, and uh, I'll bring a pillow and a blanket for you. Huh? We used to travel and go places. Not anymore. She's always complaining. Now he just watches TV. I want to go out. I just want a slightly bigger TV, and she says it's too expensive. Oh, he acts like a know-it-all, but he doesn't even know how much we could be saving with Estrella Insurance and their little prices. Their prices are little, huh? Just like you. Nope, little like you. We're the biggest and the best. Get reliable coverage at the lowest prices from top insurance providers. Don't make your next payment without checking with Estrella Insurance first. The air we breathe contains only 21% oxygen gas. The other 78% of it is nitrogen gas. Did you know oxygen supplementation can be the most immediate and effective fuel source for aerobic recovery, rejuvenation, and performance? Whether you're looking to break the world record for the 800 meter or simply break the internet, Boost Oxygen makes supplemental oxygen readily accessible. Boost Oxygen. Help is here. Charnell Taylor will take on Juan Pena. Next in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, let's learn more about Juan Pena coming to us from Fort Worth, Texas. My name is Juan Pena. I don't have a fighting name. I, I prefer just going by my name, Juan Pena. I'm from Bronzeville, Texas. I'm fighting out of Fort Worth, uh, Reyes Boxing. Um, I started fighting, you know, I just went to the barber shop and the guy that cut my hair, you know, he taught MMA. And that's how I started my fighting career. And then from there, uh, I got my first ranch fight in Mexico, and then won my first ranch fight, and then from there I just continued my career. That's how I started. And this will be my second fight. I started bare knuckle because, you know, I just, I just love fighting, you know? I mean, any type of martial arts, boxing, I mean, bare knuckle, I mean, I just like all styles of fighting, man. and that's why I'm here. I, I don't care if it's bare knuckles, or when you hear bare knuckles, to me, it's just fighting, man. I mean. If you get in there and you have, you know, what it takes to get in there, face your fears, I mean, that's all it takes. But some people are cautious because of no gloves, it's just bare knuckles. I mean, sometimes they don't want to step up to the plate. They want to take the consequences of getting cut or, you know, or getting harmed. Me, I mean, this is what I do. I love doing it. It's my passion. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this money. I'm going to get this fight. I'm going to get in there and just do work, do me. 
Juan Pena, a tough customer. He's soft-spoken, I thought, in our meeting with him yesterday, but ready to go. Yeah, but never trust a southpaw. And Glenn can tell you that. This kid's a southpaw, so we're going to see how he does in that triangle fighting from that southpaw stance. Well, the southpaw, a lot of people believe that it's difficult to fight a southpaw, but if you get close enough to him, it's just normal. Er kommt aus Deutschland. Charnel Taylor was born in Berlin. His dad in the United States Army. Let's learn more about him now. My name is Charnel Taylor. I come from Germany, Berlin. I'm living my dream as a fighter, Bushido, the way of the warrior. And now I'm going to be fighting bare knuckles. Growing up in Germany, there's a lot of racism and a lot of gangs. It was really rough because the people there didn't like Americans, especially if you have a darker skin color. That kind of led me to uh, getting into gangs and involved with that stuff too, to protect myself from other people. That opened up the path for me to become a martial artist. I started street fighting at first, and then I became a German rapper. I was one of the first guys out there that rapped in German language. I have a song called Du kennst mich, Du kennst mich. At first, fighting gave me stability until I figured out that I'm kind of fighting for the wrong reasons, and it's pretty stupid what I was doing. But I was good at it, so I was thinking, why am I fighting for people and for gangs and for, for stuff like that that doesn't really mean nothing? I started getting into yoga, meditation. Um, I started looking at my eating habits, and once I combined spirituality with fighting, that's when it really started making sense and it changed my whole life. I think bare knuckle is old form of martial arts because that's the way the warriors used to fight back in the days. When somebody gets in the ring with me and says, dance, it's beautiful, it's art, we create art together. When somebody doesn't respect the art and just tries to go for the kill, then it turns out to be a problem. I can't let that problem become my problem. I have to turn that around and make that problem for that person. My wife and I came to America to become fighters here. This is what we do together. We're very spiritual. We fight, we train. We have a little boy. People telling me you can't do it. You're too old, you're too this, you're too that. It doesn't matter what any, anybody else says, man. Don't live your life from other people's blah, blah, blah. And the expectation. You expect from yourself. And whatever you want to do, you go out there and you do it. I'm very excited about bare knuckle fighting. I'm very happy to have a chance to fight here. I'm just looking forward to uh, spreading my energy and showing people what you can do. Charnel Taylor's mom is German, his wife is German, speaks tremendous German. We had a little chat yesterday. That's my second language. There I know you, you speak five or six. <laughs> that was fun, but I love the attitude, and clearly he's ready to go. And that was impressive in the Brickens of Deutsch the whole time there when you were <laughs> no interviewing with him. He felt very comfortable. He's a little tight until you started speaking to him in German, so he loosened up. What were your thoughts about him? Well, I like his attitude. He's up spirit. Um, he seems very excited when you and him start speaking Dutch there, um, and, and I like him. I believe that he's going to do good tonight. Um, he seems like he knows what he's talking about. Er ist sehr sicher vorbereitet, which means he's ready to go and ready to fight. Tale of the tape between these two combatants. What stands out to you, Glenn? Well, Tom seems so, so seems like he, 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 he have a little more experience because you, you have two wins and, and, and seven losses. So he's been in there with a, a, a quite a few people. Um, this is his third fight. Um, so he's, he's, he's actually going to gonna get a little more experience. He have a winning even record, so we'll see how we do. And now, ready to make his way to the Trigon from the blue corner, Juan Pena. We talked about it, Southpaw Lefty from Fort Worth, Texas, 30 years old. Been in Muay Thai, been in kickboxing. Not a lot of boxing experience throughout his life, but ready to roll here tonight. He promised a lot of action early. Well, he's really been working on that one-two rhythm, and that's a key in bare knuckle. You gotta fight one-two, not one, two, three, four, and you gotta make sure you punch through your index finger and middle finger and transfer that through the cushion of your forearm, and that's where you cushion that blow. And like Glenn said, you gotta keep a tight fist, and he thinks he can get a knockout on you, and that's what he's coming looking for. Yeah, well, you know, you can't look too much about the sapper. You can't let that get into your head. You just gotta 
go out there, get close enough to your opponent, and hit him hard. He said he's got a perfect fight in mind. First time in the Trigon, 187 square feet. It is not a lot of room to operate in, but these fighters are ready. And now, ready to make his way to the Trigon from the red corner, Charnell Taylor. In our meetings yesterday, in the green room, right next to the Trigon ring, the video was up of the ring being constructed, Benny, and we asked Charnell Taylor what he thought of it. He said, it's beautiful. I love the idea of fighting in close quarters like this. How do you think he'll respond? Well, I think he's going to do fine. This is a guy who, I mean, you can tell his training is not only includes the physical part, but the mental part of it. And of course, in the, in the fight game, that mental part, and Glenn, you can elaborate on this, is so important. Well, it's very important because you want to be comfortable when you're fighting. And to him, it seems like he's already comfortable. Everything that he says shows the confidence that he has when he steps inside the ring. He didn't mind at all the close quarters. He didn't mind all the corners. All of that he said work in his benefit. So he's looking forward to it. So I want to see how we do it tonight. He feels there is synergy and connection to the Trigon. The shape, Benny, he loves the idea of being in these dimensions. There's one thing saying you love it, and another thing performing well inside, though, right? Exactly, because this is, you got to be in the moment. In the fight game, being in the moment is the most important thing. Ladies and gentlemen, from Hard Rock Live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, our next bout of the evening is brought to you by BYB Extreme Bare Knuckle Boxing, the Seminole Tribe of Florida, and Astrea Insurance. Scheduled for five three-minute rounds of bare knuckle boxing in the 170-pound division. The three judges scoring at ringside, Vincente Rodriguez, Hector Gomez, and John Rupert. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Alan A. Bellies. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing the black trunks, he weighed in at 170 and a half pounds. A veteran of nine professional bouts from Fort Worth, Texas. Here is Juan Pena. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with white trim. He weighed in at 167 pounds. His professional record, bare knuckle, one win, one loss. From Berlin, Germany, here is Chernell Taylor. All right, guys, come to the center. I gave you the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up, go ahead. Come out fighting. Here we go. Scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Good start early for Taylor. Penny responds with the left. Taylor is using his jab, which is good. Mud already for Pena. Behind his left ear, see it trickle down his back there. Interesting the way Taylor sh shifts his guard from side to side, so from southpaw to or orthodox. Doesn't seem to be lethargic when he switches to that side, keeps his excellent balance. And he switches, just keep on moving around, different, moving these stands, different stands, moving from left to right. And he seems to be very comfortable and very confident in what he's doing. Now he's digging to the body, he's getting close, he's closing that gap, and he's very sure of himself. He's got Penny in the corner, Benny, and that's something Penny wants to avoid. Exactly, and Taylor's getting the position that he wanted. Now he's got him in there, and you can't get away. Glenn, when you get in this corner here, you can't not get out of there. He is landing punches. The referee steps in. 
Once you get Alex in that Alex Avila makes a good, I thought he made a good stoppage because he, uh, there's no way that Pena was going to get out of there. That's right. Once you get in that corner, it's difficult to get out because it's so tight in there. There is no room to step around your opponent. And you know, our, our man, Dada5000, came up with this trigon. And basically what he did for you folks is he took out one set of cords, one set of ropes, and just kind of packed it all in right there. So within that five-foot radius is where you're going to get the action. you got to fight, no matter what, because there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. And you know, when you talk about, Dave and Glenn, when you talk about the mental part of fighting, you saw the calmness. Taylor seemed so calm, so serene. He was just kind of walking through the totally relaxed. And Glenn, talk about that relaxation for a fighter. Well, he's very calm because he have a belief. You know, he's, he, he believe in what he's about to do. He don't believe that he can lose. He don't believe this guy can beat him. So he's very comfortable in the atmosphere. The tightness of the ropes, none of that um, put any fear in him or make him uncomfortable. He just believed that I'm the boss here and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. His game plan, guys, as we check the replay of this very quick fight, followed it to a T. He told us yesterday how this would unfold and it worked out exactly as the blueprint was laid out. Nice body shot. He stepped in that hard. Hey, you know, there's a term in boxing called walking your opponent down, and that's exactly what he did. He just took up that space, placed him exactly where he wanted to put him, and then all of a sudden it was an attack on the anatomy of Juan Pena. Good stoppage. I'm with you. Oh, I'm totally in accord. I'd rather stop something sooner than later. Yeah, definitely. He was not in position to punch back. It was in a submission position, so it's a good stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, from Hard Rock Live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, your referee in charge, Alan A. Bellies, calls a halt to the bout. At one minute, 10 seconds of the first round, your winner by TKO, Chernell Taylor. Born and raised in Berlin, Germany. Now also spends plenty of time and trains in Fort Myers, Florida. And he's joined now by Dada 5000. Charmel, you stated yesterday what you was going to come out here and do today. Did it go exactly as planned? Yes, sir, it went exactly as planned. I see that you had him hurt early and you didn't let up. You got him inside one of the triangle corners in the mighty trigon and you finished him. Is this what you trained for, a finish of this epic proportion? Yes, sir, that was exactly what we talked about. Even when you asked me yesterday, what do I like about the Trigon so much? It's just the shape of it, and it's a totally different war, war atmosphere that you can build up, create, and, and get involved with. And my coach, it go, all the credit goes to my coach and to my training partners at Future MMA, Fort Myers. Um, they told me to do my thing, work the jab, bring him in the corner, and from there on, uh, just light him up, and that's what we did. You did an awesome job. Happy to have you a part of the night's nice program. Can't wait to see you back in the Mighty Trigon soon. Okay. Juan, talk to me. You came out and you were squared up nice. It seems like you got hurt early. And did you ever get a chance to fully recover? I did, man. It's just that corner, man. That's what got me. I need, I need, I need to work on getting out the way, man. But shit, that's what got me. Other than that, I mean, I was still able to maintain even though I was cut. I mean, it's just that corner got to me. Let me ask you, this is totally different from anything that's that's out there, totally different from the boxing ring or the octagon. How serious is this mighty trigon? It's just different. No, there's no space, but I mean, it's meant to bang, man. I mean, just let that dog out. Other than that, it's just got to watch out for those corners. That's what I experience right now. But those corners is what I, I need to work on that, but I'll be back stronger, man. This is not the first time I'm going to be here. I'm going to make sure I get a W, bro. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I wanted, but it didn't turn out. But that's not, I got too much heart to stop now. Hey, listen, I just want to say thank you for coming out to participate, and we hope to see you very soon. Yes, awesome. Back to you guys. Dot off 5,000. Thank you. Shout out Taylor. Underdog tattoo on the chest and shoulder, but he was a powerhouse tonight. Absolutely, and the key was he did not let Pena get that backhand into the fight. Tremendous execution. A winner in Fort Lauderdale, Charnell Taylor. Experience good, clean, fun. 
Meet the Clean Team. Cleaning and sanitizing all common areas and high touch surfaces every 30 minutes. Contactless digital menus available at all our restaurants. Screening and temperature checks taken upon entry. Hand sanitizing stations throughout the property. Masks or cloth face coverings required. Physical distancing. Your safety and protection are first priority, which begins prior to your arrival. You'll arrive to a sealed room, exactingly prepared to ensure your safety and protection for your peace of mind. So you can relax and enjoy yourself. More space between slot machines. Gaming chips sanitized, as well as all slots, tables, and chairs. We are dedicated to keeping you safe and sound. We used to travel and go places, not anymore. She's always complaining. Now he just watches TV. I want to go out. I just want a slightly bigger TV. She says it's too expensive. He acts like a know-it-all, but he doesn't even know how much we could be saving with Estrella Insurance and their little prices. Their prices are little, huh? Just like you? Nope, little like you. We're the biggest and the best. Get reliable coverage at the lowest prices from top insurance providers. Don't make your next payment without checking with Estrella Insurance first. The air we breathe contains only 21% oxygen gas. The other 78% of it is nitrogen gas. Did you know oxygen supplementation can be the most immediate and effective fuel source for aerobic recovery, rejuvenation, and performance? Whether you're looking to break the world record for the 800 meter or simply break the internet, Boost Oxygen makes supplemental oxygen readily accessible. Boost Oxygen. Help is here. Moments away, start of this fight, Dooley Lopez, tail of tape. Well, you see, Lopez is going to have a five-inch reach advantage right there. But again, a, a, a wrestler like Dooley who understands leverage can overcome that, and he's going to bring that force. For Lopez, very calm guy is going to fight from a distance. Well, both of these guys have good experience. I'm looking for a good match. This might be the most competitive fight of all of them. This foul scheduled for five three-minute rounds of bare-knuckle boxing in the 225-pound division. The three judges scoring at ringside, Vincente Rodriguez, John Rupert, and Rich Green. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Alan A. Bellies. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing orange trunks, he weighed in at 218 pounds. Undefeated in his bare knuckle career, two wins, no losses. From Port St. Lucie, Florida, here is Carlos Lopez. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with gold trim. He weighed in at 214 and three quarter pounds. A veteran of 11 bare knuckle bouts from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Here is Tegan Dooley. Carlos, Carlos, Tegan. I gave you the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up, go ahead. Come out fighting. Ready to rock. Here tonight at the Hard Rock. And you're going to go watch Dooley bend those knees, get underneath Lopez and deliver his blow. Well, I like the fact that he have a tight guard up, but he changed it and start keeping his hands down. But he started out the right way. Nice combination. See, I love that uppercut. Down low. Yes, it was beautiful. Now you just need to start using that jab. But if you look at the way Lopez has his hands wide, Glenn, that's an ideal place for an uppercut, and that's what Dooley already spotted. Well, Dooley not using his jab, though. He's looking for the A-makers only. I would like to see him try to set it up. Lopez. Charging has him against the ropes briefly. Now go with straight. 
Nice and easy. Yes! Ooh, a tremendous More athlete. than one, though, and stop with that bullshit. And Dooley knows exactly where he's at because, you know, he's trying to make sure that he does not back up to that corner. Staying in the middle there. Yeah, he keep turning and keep turning, which is smart. But he's still not using the jab. He needs to be a little more busy. Don't worry about his hand. Open hand, Lopez. We saw that at the very beginning of the fight. Dooley's close a bit. Shoot the uppercut too. Shoot the uppercut, puppy. And now you can hear him asking him to throw that uppercut to Lopez. An angle right down the pipe. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Left connected. To the chin, and Lopez comes back with a flurry. Stick him, stick him, stick him. Lands a left. Lopez is hurt a bit. Hey, straight, double jab up, double jab up. And Glenn, you can see how Dooley becomes dangerous once he bends down, because he comes up with bad intentions on those shots. Well, you can see these guys are much, much calmer than the guys before because of the experience between them. You know, they throw in good combinations. They're very calm. They're not going through an A-makers and all crazy and wild. They're disciplined punchers. Body, body, body. Double that jab, please. Body. And if I was to correct something to Dooley, he's looping that jab there, Glenn, instead of throwing it straight ahead. Well, he's trying to go around the guard, but he needs to go open it up because he got to go straight and then goes around the guard with the punches and combinations. 30 seconds left in round one, scheduled for five. Can it be with BYB? Extreme bare knuckle. We actually are going to get a full round in in Fort Lauderdale. It's a rarity. Don't reach, don't reach straight punches. 15 now seconds. We're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're and there's moving. blood coming out of the Good. left Good. eye That's of Lopez. Uppercut, uppercut go, uppercut go. Swing, swing. Final moments of the round. High activity, high output. Here's round two. And Dave, I scored that first round for Dooley. I thought he did more, so I got a 10-9 round. I don't know how you scored it, Glenn, but I thought that Dooley did more than Lopez. Well, I, I didn't like Dooley didn't use enough jab. I think he needed to throw more punches. He was just looking for the haymakers. Um, and Lopez was staying busy the whole time. So I gave Lopez the, the, the round. Dooley on the defensive. Yeah, he just acts well. He's playing defense and he's doing a good job of it, but he, you know, he, he, defense don't win fights. You need to throw a punch. Especially the Trigon go, line. You gotta go, get aggressive. Go, go. <laughs> Definitely. Be offensive in the limited fighting space. Somebody lost their mouthpiece yeah. there. And they did a good job stopping the blood in the left eye of Carlos Lopez. Corner did a great job on that one. Got to make sure the right fighter gets the mouthpiece back in. <laughs> We're good now. See, he's, he, he's not doing enough work. It's like Dooley's tiring a bit here, guys. Yeah, Dooley's not working. He's not punching. He's just playing defense. And that's the thing in the BYB, you're talking about 15 minutes of action, so you got to bring it during that time. Yeah, Carlos is working. He keeps throwing good uppercut. He's throwing his jab, he's setting punches up, while Dooley's waiting to throw just an A-maker. And he's stepping. A lot of times they throw wild punches where that doesn't land. Like that, he walk into an uppercut again. Lopez is connected a couple times, guys, in this round. And you know, big guns like that, like Dooley's got, they look good, but not in a boxing ring because they get heavy, very heavy. Well, it looks good, but you know, you gotta throw punches to win fights and just not doing anything. Right now, he's just moving around, trying to play safe. He's doing a good job of staying out of the corners, but he's not doing anything else. Dooley held that left ear, guys, a couple times. Nice Turn. body shot. He's back into the ropes again. Lopez has really done well in the second round. Quite a bit of blood on the chest of Lopez. And I think when Dooley lost his mouth guard, it was also, you know, because of the fact that he's gassed. He's opening up his mouth, and he's trying to breathe through his mouth, which is not a good thing. Well, Carlos is using that jab. He's not doing any damage with the jab, but he's keeping it busy. Watch out. Dooley's in the corner. Never a good place to be in the Trigon. 
Again, well, put it on that he's chin. safe. He's not in the, in the killer corner. He's Come in the safe Marlo. corner. <laughs> and Glenn, he's got a great target. That left eye of Lopez, which is puffed up underneath. Yeah, but if that, that damage is done early. He's trying to make a target of it, but he needs to throw more punches. Lopez is bleeding badly. Out of the left eye. Final seconds of the round. Well, Dooley Face is, is a bright example of how he's fighting. He's fighting safe. He's protecting his face. He's protecting himself. He's not really throwing much punches. He's not, he's not taking any chances. So that's why he's, you know, he's trying to stay pretty while the other guy's trying to win the fight. Lopez on the charge here, looking for a corner. Back Dooley into. Good early flurry. Third round. Can it be a third round? They're not been fighting in Fort Lauderdale. They're chatting up now. But Dooley hasn't scored in a while, guys. In the middle. Yes. Again, I like that big breath. Dooley just Join seems right tight, Glenn. He seems very, very tight in the way he throws his punches. It's not a loose punch that he doesn't snap it. Well, yeah, he's he got a lot of muscles. And, uh, you know, for a heavyweight, he's not too big. But he just seems like he's not responding to his muscles well. Like he's, you know, maybe those are not natural muscles. Four more, baby. Come on. Lopez now scores again. Connects a couple times. Connects again with a right to the chin. Dooley trying to respond, but it's not happening right now for Tegan Dooley. For Lopez, here's a guy who's accustomed to fighting at midnight back in El Salvador, 1 o'clock in the morning, whatever. Anytime, those guys are ready to go ahead and throw it. It doesn't matter, the arena, the venue, anything. Double nothing more for Dulick. Hey, you have to initiate. Oh, he's tired. His hands are down. Yeah, his tired. hands are down. He's exhausted yeah, yeah. right he's, now. He's tired. He's vulnerable. Yeah, he's tired. But you know, this is the time when Lopez should attack the body of Dulick. Definitely should be going to the body. He's tried a few times, but he definitely need to attack the body now. Because the head's going to remain hard. The body softens up. Oh, yeah. And when you gas and you get hit to the body, it hurts so much more. It takes all the wind out of you. Even those punches that he's throwing and missing takes a lot of gas out of him. A minute to go in the third, scheduled for five. Dooley told us yesterday he wanted to control the pace of this fight, but really it's been Lopez in control throughout. Good body shot. Lopez is working him over. His punches is getting slower and slower as the rounds go on. Lopez can feel some momentum with 40 seconds left in the round. Yes! Come on, baby! I'm amazed, though, that Lopez's hands have been able to go ahead and withstand, because that's a lot of punches that he has thrown in left. Oh, what an uppercut. <laughs> that was a beautiful shot, and then he pushed it down. Flores Dooley with a push. Here's the count. Tegan Dooley. Up. He's it's more over. tired than hurt. <laughs> it's over. Carlos Lopez gets a victory. It was hard fought. For a bare knuckle fight, it went deep. And that's an example of relentless pursuit. Lopez came to fight, and he was going to do anything he could to go and get the win. That cut on the left eye, above the left eye, yet through all that, he was still able to find Dooley the spots that he needed to hit. Well, he, you know, he was never shy. Even though he got cut, it did never phase him any, uh, at, at any time. He just keep on coming, stepping forward, and throwing his combination. He knows punches when fight, and he just keep punching no matter what. He was bleeding, he was swelling up, and he just keep on working. Next. And Glenn, now, you now train fighters. What would you do to do? What would you tell Dooley as far as his training for his cardio? Well, it could be a lot of things. It could be he, he, he wasn't training properly, cardio work, or maybe the way his body is built. Maybe, he's, you know, cardio activity is just not for him. He can't, you know, maybe that's something he can't do. I don't know him well enough to know. But right here, you can see an uppercut happen right there. And as that uppercut happened, he just went down immediately. Here's a look. Uh, another the uppercut, look. there's the push, and that was the end. That was the end. It caught him right in the face. 
And I'll be honest with you guys, Tegan Dooley was gassed. I mean, I, it was just exhausting. I definitely believe that. Fight. I definitely believe that he was more tired than hurt. See, he's still hurting now. Ladies and gentlemen from Hard Rock Live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, your referee in charge, Alan Abelis, reaches the count of 10 at 2 minutes 48 seconds of round number three. Your winner by knockout, Carlos Lopez. Carlos Lopez, we sat down with you yesterday. And you told us this is what you do, and you came out and you executed. Did you get a chance to stick to your game plan that you and your camp worked on? Well, yes, I did. Um, you know, I did what what I've been training. You know, we are. Uh, I didn't know nothing about the guy. You know, I just respect him, and I came to fight. You know, I had my game plan. You know, I saw. Um, uh, I didn't know nothing about him. Like I said, we worked this uh, in the locker room just now. Uppercuts and, and, you know, and I got the W. This is your first time inside the mighty Trigon ring. What did it feel like for you to be inside this ring and to be in a position to put your opponent inside one of those corners? Well, let me tell you. Uh, it, the ring, like I told you, I like, to, I like to fight. I don't like to go in the corners. I like to fight, uh, you know, and that's what I showed. That's what I told you. That's what I showed over here. I came to fight. I didn't come to play around, you know. Um, I love this. I'm sorry, but I love it, um, and I want to keep doing it. You put on an awesome performance, and I know the people cannot wait to have you back. You know, inside your BYB debut at BYB4, it was a success. Thank you, sir. Back to you guys. Shot off 5,000. It sure was. Carlos Lopez caught not once. He was caught twice, and he just kept on trucking. Tremendous determination. A deep fight that goes into the third round, and eventually, Carlos Lopez victorious in Florida tonight as he takes down Tegan Dooley. Special thanks to members of the Seminole Tribal Council. Chief Marcellus Osceola, Mitchell Cypress, David Cypress, Christopher Osceola, and Larry Howard. Now for the entire crew, Benny Ricardo, Glenn Johnson, and ring announcer Bob Alexander, along with Donna 5000. It's Dave Ryan saying so long, and thanks for watching from Fort Lauderdale, Florida.